Greetings, brethren. I like to uh, deal with uh, Calvinism today, and I would like to refute uh, two points in the acronym TULIP, uh, Unconditional Election and Limited Atonement. And I would like to refute and show you how errored it is, and uh, it is false. And uh, first, I would like to define these uh, two points. I, unconditional election and limited atonement. First, we'll start with unconditional election. What is unconditional election? The reform doctrine relating to predestination that describes the action and motives of God prior to his creation of the world. When he predestined some people to re receive salvation, the election and the rest was left to continue in their sins and receive the just punishment, eternal damnation, for their transgression of God's law and outline of Old and New Testaments in, of the Bible. God made these choices according to his own purpose, apart from any conditions or qualities related to those persons. So, um, some people like really, well, we always accuse that he predestines some, the, the elect, for salvation. And he elected for some uh, damnation. And some say, well, he just chose certain people to be saved and he passed over the others. That's just the same, that's just the same difference. He elected some that would harden their heart, he chosen, he predestined them to be passed over and in their end result, damnation. He chose for them to be damned. In, in contrast, I they say, well, he didn't chose the damnation. He just chose people to be saved. And, you know, in contrast, these people are left to their own devices. Well, he chose not the, that they would be part in their hearts and chosen them to pass over that they result in damnation. So it's... You try to weasel away, and you have people saying that, um, you know, swelling words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. It's the same thing as he chose some, he chose not to save some. Oh, well, yeah, he chose that whoever shall believe that, that uh, eternal life be applicable he died for his, uh, the atonement work is, he died for all men. His atonement reached for all men. It was sufficient, but it's only applicable, those, applied to those who would believe. But they believe on their own, own thing. They hear the gospel. The, the faith comes by hearing the gospel. You react to the gospel and the Holy Spirit convicts you, regenerates you. That's the, all the work. Yes, predestination is, in some aspect, an election is um, biblical because, like, he chose Israel for uh, a special people. He chose certain methods to be done. He predestinated that uh, whosoever shall believe in his son will have an eternal life. He chose certain things and certain methods and certain ways, but that doesn't extend to salvation, saying he predestined, chosen, that these people would believe. <laughs> it doesn't extend to, we still have free will, the ability to respond. So anyways, the next one is limited atonement. It's a doctrine accepted some Christian theological traditions. It's particularly, particularly associated with the Reformed tradition as one of the five points of Calvinism. The doctor states that though the death of Jesus Christ is sufficient to atone for uh, the sins of the world, the intention of God, of the Fa uh, God the Father, is that the atonement of Christ's death would only itself work itself only to their delight thereby leading them without fail to salvation. According to the limited atonement, Christ 
died for the sins of the elect alone. He only died for the elect. And no atonement, no, the, yeah. And no atonement was provided for the reprobate. But what is a reprobate? The ones that can't be saved or that are ungenerous. Well, no, that you have to be careful in this one extreme universal that they are forgiven, they are atoned for uh, that all people are already forgiven. And that's not true either. But his, the atonement work is extended to all men, but the eternal life aspect is only applicable to those who, who would believe. So anyways, let's see what I have here. Yeah, in all these uh, scriptures, when it says all in the world, they're going to have to reinterpret the whole Bible that, that the all there only means elect, all of the elect, all that he would choose. And the world is out of what he has chosen. You would have to say, go throughout the Bible when it, all, when it says all in the world, so God loved the world, so God loved the elect, they sent his only son. That not, uh, whosoever shall believe, whosoever, who the elect should believe, and I believe in his son, that they should not perish, but have everlasting life. You have to interpret, interpret all in the world as all it means, all elect, the world is out of what you have chosen. You have to interpret the whole Bible when it says all, 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 world, 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 to mean something different. They do that. Um, let's go to Colossians. Colossians 1. Verses 19 and 20. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell, and have made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether things in earth and things in heaven, all things by the God, uh, he has achieved peace of, to reconcile all things on earth and on heaven, to himself, to the peace of the blood of the cross. And we have to be careful. This does not mean um, everyone's forgiven already, but all, all that belief will be, all that is, all things is reconciled back to him, by him, you know, through him, those who believe, and he made appeasement, Preparation of all sin to the whole world. He, he has atoned the whole world, but the eternal life is only extended to those who will believe. So you have to be careful not to say that um, everyone's forgiven, everyone's going to heaven, because that's universalism. But all things is reconciled. He reconciles all things to him. You have to start with that. Now, this is one of the things, one of the scriptures they use to say it's only the elect, or it has nothing to do with your faith. It's by God's grace, God, uh, grace, his power of grace that he has chosen, you know, and it has nothing to do with your faith. It runs to Colossians 2.14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away, nailing to the cross. Yeah, God, it has nothing to do with your faith. But you backed up to, um, let's see, 11. In whom also you have circumcised with the uncircumcision made without hands, putting off the body of sins, of the flesh, which by circumcision of Christ, buried with him 
in baptism, when you believe you're buried, your old man is buried in, in him through baptism, wherein ye are risen with him through faith of his operation of God. So you're risen in the new man through faith when you believe. It has something to do with your faith, not just God elected you to have faith, uh, that he chose you to effectually cause you to have faith. No, it's through your faith, the faith operation who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, uncircumcision of the flesh, have quickened together with him, have forgiven you of all its trespasses to those through faith, faith is the one that uh, he has forgiven all trespasses. Through faith, he's blotting out the hand, handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary, took out of the way, kneeling to his cross. This is through faith, through our faith, through the response, through the um, hearing of the God's word, that the Holy Spirit regenerates us. The only thing we have in it is hearing the word of God, um, believing it. But the Holy Spirit is the only one that regenerates us. That's the work. It's whether we want to respond or not. Not that God causes you to respond. <laughs> All right. Another one they run to is Romans 9. This is a big one to prove election and the doctrine of unconditional election and the rest is elected to be reprobates. Okay, Romans 9, where do we pick up here? So there is not him that willeth, nor the, him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even the same purpose have raised thee up, I might show my power in thee, that my name might be declared throughout the earth. Therefore he hath he has mercy on whom he has mercy, and whom he will hard. So he allows people to have harden their hearts. He has mercy on those who has mercy. That's, yes, that's right. But he allows that to happen. That will say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? Who hath resisted his will? So who has resisted his will that those who are hardened, God willed them to be hardened. So who resisted his will that his will was them to be hardened, that they can't be saved, that they're reprobates? Who resisted his will that they be hardened? Now this is just showing that there, he made people that he can use both the ones, the vessels of righteousness and the righteous vessels of unrighteous, the vessels of righteousness, both the vessels of righteousness and the wicked people for his glory. That's all that means. Nay, but all men, who art thou that replies against him? Who sh shall the thing form say unto him, who hast thou? Why hast thou made me thus? Why have you made me so? Have they not power of the same clay to make the one one the vessel and the other honor and the other dishonor? For if God willing to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured, endured much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted under destruction. So to make his power known is glory. He can use people, the wicked people, to show his glory, but he suffers 
this th things to be so, not saying that he chose them to be de uh, to be reprobates. But who is the who are the vessels who fitted their structure? Aren't we all fitted uh, children of wrath, disobedient people fitted unto destruction? Isn't that our destination if we do not put faith in the blood and be regenerated? <laughs> no, you're destined to be reprobates. No, uh, we'll see. I'll show you. Ephesians chapter 2. I'll show you. By nature, we're all uh, children of disobedience, wick, wicked people, unrighteous, fitting to eternal punishment, destruction. By nature. New Atheist Quicken, Ephesians 2. What do I have here? Ephesians 2, verse 3. But we'll start in the first, um, start of the chapter. Who hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins? Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit not worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also ye had our conversation past in the lust of, of, of the flesh, Filling desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. By nature, we are unrighteous, we are wicked, we fulfill the lusts of our flesh. By nature, we're children of disobedience, we're children of wrath, we are destined. Those who are wicked has destined to be uh, children of wrath, he, he, they will suffer wrath, destruction the punishment because they're wicked. They have not been redeemed. By nature, we are children of disobedience. We are children of wrath. By nature. Because we're sinful. Not that uh, God destined, predestined, chosen those to be faithful and those to be reprobates. By nature, by our human nature, we are sinful. We're wicked. By nature. So how can you tell me that he passed over some, some are chosen, some are left to their own devices, and chosen to be reprobates? Not sending them to hell, but uh, did not extend the same grace to them, and left their own devices, they're fitted to destruction. They're destined to be reprobates. No, by nature we're all wicked. Another one they they run to to say that uh, there's a that we're elected we the, that God elects us to be saved and passes over or elect chooses not to save other people to be reprobates. Paul and this is Ephesians one. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus. And to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to grace to you, peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ, according he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before God in love. See, he has chosen us to be saved. No, <laughs> he's chosen us. Who's the us? Go up to verse one. Saints, saved people. We are chosen before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. He chose us, saved people, to be holy and blame without him in love. See, verse four, he has chosen us in him. Is 
is uh, unsaved people in Christ? That's crazy. You're telling me unsaved people are in Christ, that they're chosen to be in Christ, to be saved. No, when you're in him, you're already saved. Chosen those who are not in him to be saved. But that isn't what it says. He has chosen us, the saints, saved people, in him that we, before the foundation, he's chosen us in him that we should be holy and without blame and love. That's what he had chosen us to, be, to do. We should be holy and without blame. That's what he's chosen us to do. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by the Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He has predestined us to be, to be adopted of children by Jesus Christ to himself. He predestined us to be adopted as children, not predestined us to be saved. To praise the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us in the beloved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness according to the riches of grace, wherein we have found it to us all in prudence, all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto the mystery of his will, according to his will, good pleasure purposes him. Um, let's see. In whom we have attained an inheritance, have a predestined according to purpose, work at all things after his own will, that we should be praised of glory, who trusted in Christ. He predestined to this purpose according to the purpose of his own counsel, that we be praised of his glory, who trusted in Christ. That's conditional. Who trust? We are predestined to be uh, praised of glory. Those who trust in Christ. This is not about predestined to be saved. I'm sorry. You have to reinterpret this whole passage. Just say these are not saved people. And predestined the elect is the only ones to be saved. Anyways. I'll go to another one, Romans 8. Verses 29, 29 and 30. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> let's let's um pick it up in twenty eight. We know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that's called according to his purpose. For whom he did for new, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be first born among a uh, firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, he breast whom he predestinate, he also called who he called them they justified them he also justified whom he justified he also glorified so <clears throat> and we know all things together to good that love God the the context is he uh, predestined those to conform to be conformed to his son those who love God and those who love God is predestined. He did uh, he predestined them to be conformed to His Son. He did also call them, you know, by the hearing of the gospel, that the the working in their hearts to be transmitted in. And those He He has called that moved in this, their spirits. He also justified those who believed, and who justified glorified. So, those who love God, how can you get around that? God caused the people to love God. 
he elected those, he chose those out of all the people, those who love God. No, we have to love God. <laughs> we have to choose to love God. God's not choosing us to love God. Crazy people. Crazy, crazy doctrines. Okay, we'll get into limited atonement that Christ uh, atonement work extended atoned was appeased the wrath for the whole world, and he wishes all the world be sinned, that all the world be saved, that wishes none to shift perish, but all be saved, all shall come to repentance, that he wishes to save all men. We'll go to um, to show that Second Corinthians five five verse fourteen to fifteen and First John two two. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses fourteen to fifteen. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge, if one die for all, then we're all dead. And he, that he died for all, that they should live, that which should live, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So if one died for all, that he died for all, not just all the elect, all, that we should henceforth live on, not live unto ourselves, but unto which died for them and rose again. Died for Christ, uh, live for Christ. But he died for all, not just all of the elect, because first John 2, 2, and he is a preparation for our sins, not for our sins only, for the saved people, the elect people, also for sins of the whole world. Whole world. What does that mean? Oh, the one that he's chosen out of the whole world. Uh, the whole world is the whole world of the elect. No. The appropriation appeases the wrath, paid for, he paid for, it was sufficient to appease the wrath, not for our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. Whole world. What does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> the whole world means all the left. No, the whole world. It appeases the wrath paid for the sins of the whole world, not just our sins, but the whole world. All right. John 1 and verse 29. Next day John seeth Jesus coming upon him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. What does the world mean? The elect. The world, all people, he, he, he chose, he, his intent was to, to take away the sin of the world, all people. 
I mean, atonement extended to all people, but the eternal life is only extended to those who would believe. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Titus 2.11. For the grace of God that bringing the salvation has appeared to all men. So the, God's grace is extended to all men. Not just all of the elect, all that he's chosen. But the grace extended to all men. All right, what do I have next? First Timothy 4 and verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in living God, who's the savior of all men, especially those two, those that believe. He's the savior of the world to all men, but especially the savior to those to believe because, um, because those who believe gets eternal life. So he's a savior, especially to the one who believes. Because it, this atonement work is sufficient for all men, but only applicable for eternal life for those who believe. But especially, he's a savior of all men. He's the savior of the world. But especially those who have faith in the world. Okay, what next? I'm closing out here with Acts 17.20. And Second Peter 3.9. Oh, Acts 17.30, not 20. Excuse me. Acts 17.30. In the times of ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. All men. He commands, it doesn't mean that all men will repent, but he commands all men to repent, not just the elect. Second Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, and some men should count slackness, but his long suffering toward on to, to, to us were not willing any should perish, but all should come all all should come to come to repent. repent. I messed that up. Not willing any shall perish, but that all should come to repentance. He doesn't wish none should perish. He wishes all to come to repentance. Not just those he has chosen and those he has passed over, passed over that he wills them to perish. He wishes all men should, should come to repentance. 
how is that how does that make sense? He only chooses, he only willed for some to come to repentance and some to perish, but saying he wishes none to perish, but all come to repentance, which is right, which is the truth. He chooses some, some to uh, come to repentance, but he did not will that others should be saved, uh, that they should be, he willed them, chosen them to be reprobates. How does, which is true, the word of God or Calvinism? Does the word of God say none shall perish and all come to repentance? Or does Calvinism is true that he wishes some to perish and some to be come to repentance? Which is true, Calvinism or the word of God? The word of God is true and Calvinism false. I'm sorry that some some Calvinists don't like that, that they said Calvinism true. Calvinism is the truth. The word of God says no. Calvinism not true. Go by the word of God, not by Calvinism. And I hope you do. I hope this helps you. Thank you and take care.